Mike Heller, head baseball coach, University of Iowa. Mike Gottmer, FBI. Gabby Holmes, Baylor College of Medicine internship. Dominic Killesheim, and I work for the Chicago Bears. And this is Soldier Field. My name is Julia Sapinia. <laughs> My name is Lamont Williams, and I am Chief of Staff for Cook County Commissioner Bill Lowe. Anna Winter, NASA internship. Mike Prohaska, Enterprise Service Manager, Amazon Web Services. I'm Heidi Levine. I'm an Associate Athletic Trainer for Women's Basketball, and this is where I work. Hi, my name is Jordan Brennan, and this is the mural I painted. Well, when I was a kid, um, and I remember at 12 years old, a teacher asked me what I was going to do when I went to college, and I said, I'm going to play football, baseball, and basketball, and he laughed at me. And, and I said, no, I said, I will. And, and he says, well, what are you going to do for a job? I said, well, I, hopefully I'm playing baseball, but if I'm not playing, I know I'm going to be around baseball in some way. Well, I came to Upper Iowa, actually, Fayette, in 1971. My dad was hired as the baseball and basketball coach here at the university. Uh, we moved from Buffalo Center, Iowa, I was four years old, so um, I have a long history of Fayette and uh, Upper Iowa. Well, thinking back to when I was a freshman coming in, I was shy and quiet, and I definitely did not have the confidence at all to be able to think about doing such a large project. Myself, uh, growing up, didn't really think I was a good fit for college um, with a very uh, uh, organized environment. Um, you know, post-military, I kind of changed my mind a little bit, but, you know, going into it, I never, I never would have imagined um, even uh, going to college, let alone achieving a degree anywhere, and all, all those doors that have been opened up for me because of that. You know, when I graduated from Upper Iowa in 1986, um, I taught school one year in Bakersfield, Missouri, uh, way down on the Arkansas border, and I was going to work one of Coach Prohaska's basketball camps that summer. Uh, I called up uh, to see when Coach Pro wanted me to arrive. Mike McCready, the athletic director, answered the phone and uh, we had a chat. Mike told me that Coach Pro, if the right guy would take over, was thinking about uh, giving baseball up, just sticking to basketball. Back in those days, as Coach Pro said, you had to wear more than one hat and uh, he had a lot of hats. and. Uh, so I said, I'd be very interested. And, and so that's kind of how the ball got rolling. And, um, you know, he had to be the residence hall director and I had to take an $8,000 pay cut from the high school job, but I wanted to be a college baseball coach. And, uh, you know, Coach Pro, uh, you know, putting his blessing on it and Mike McCready having enough faith in a 24 year old kid uh, to come in and take over the program, you know, just changed my life forever. with the theme of Imagine, you know, how I got from, how I went from Upper Iowa as a 18 year old to, you know, Chief of Staff now at 31 for uh, Cook County Commissioner Bill Lowry. And I remember it was my uh, African American history class. Loved history and back and forth with this professor it was really engaging. And I remember one day he, he told me during class, he said, what do you see yourself doing? And I said, you know, I'm either gonna be a teacher I think I might go to law school. And he said, well, have you ever thought about being a leader? I definitely uh, remember that being a defining moment um, at 18, first couple classes up for Iowa, just sitting there thinking, where would I be in 10 years? I came in the last day of school to the head of our computer science department, uh, Jim Janicki, and he said, hey, they have this internship program at IBM. I think you would benefit from it. And I said, doc, you know, I'm all set up to graduate. I, you know, I just don't have time to do it. He goes, no, really, you should take it home and take a look at it. So I did, and I, don't, I still don't know this day why. Um, I applied for this internship. Uh, about mid-July, I got a call from IBM. I'll never forget, 7.30 in the morning, my mom yells down at me, I'm sleeping downstairs. Hey, Mike, phone call from you. I'm like, take a message, I'll call back. It's early in the morning. I think I might have been out late the night before the softball team. And she goes, it's IBM. So I jumped up, and, and at the end of the 30-minute call, he said, hey, we want to offer you an internship position starting this fall uh, for the full school year. And I honestly, this is exactly what I said to the guy. I said, can I ask my mom and dad first and I get back to you? Because I didn't know what to do. I was ready to graduate, right? Um, coming into Upper Iowa, I knew that eventually one summer I'd want to do an internship. I wasn't quite sure where, um, so I applied 
to the Laboratory of Malaria Immunology and Vaccinology and ultimately got a position in the Recombinant Antibody and Antigen Discovery Unit, which is very cool. That is one of 37 institutes at the National Institutes of Health. I worked on a placental malaria vaccine candidate um, regarding the protein VAR2CSA. I always kind of knew that I wanted to work in sports, so um, I was fortunate enough to get an internship with the uh, Chicago Bears um, in the events and entertainment department through a uh, training camp. So two of my professors, Dr. B and Dr. Olson, had found out about the NASA Student Airborne Research Program, and they told me that it was something that they thought would combine all my interests and something that they thought I should apply, apply to. So at first I thought, like, oh, it's NASA, like, I'm never going to get into that. But I applied and gave it a shot, and I ended up getting in, and it was definitely one of the best experiences of my life. I acted as what they call a sub-intern, which would be equivalent to a medical student. I was in there every day um, from 5 a.m. usually to 7 p.m. Um, shadowing the surgeons, getting to talk to patients, um, scrubbing into surgeries, um, being right there watching what they were doing. So, so coming to Texas, um, you know, wasn't something that I was planning to do. Working from the WMEA, I started um, at the Chicago Sky in 2015 and loved working in the professional setting, loved working with professional female athletes. Um, and then got the opportunity to come back and work in the collegiate setting at the University of Texas. And I've loved everything about working here. You know, it was always a hope of mine when I was going through athletic training program at Upper Iowa. And then to make this a reality now um, is more than I ever could have imagined. You know, for a lot of years, I probably sent, you know, 100, 100 resumes and made phone calls and, and, and really uh, didn't even get an interview uh, at a Division I school. And, <clears throat> And I just basically had come to grips with the fact that I probably wasn't. And I was very, very uh, uh, content with being at Upper Iowa. We were in a good place. We were going to win every year. We had a great field. I love Fayette. Uh, I could have retired there, really. And I had just, just uh, basically come to grips. It wasn't going to happen. And a lot of guys don't ever get that opportunity. And uh, thank goodness for Rick Hartzell. Uh, Rick was just hired in Northern Iowa. Um, he had enough faith to hire a Division Three guy to come over and run the program, uh, you know, in the Missouri Valley at the University of Northern Iowa. And, you know, now Rick is back at Upper Iowa running the show and, and doing a great job. And obviously I'm super, super thankful to Rick for having enough faith for giving me that opportunity. But I didn't know I would be at Iowa, but I, I was really hopeful that someday I would have a chance to coach at the Division One level. And I'd say probably around my end of my freshman year, or sophomore year, um, I kind of figured out that I wanted to do that um, for a living so I started to talk to some of my bosses and managers at at the Bears and um, kind of talked about what I needed to do um, to get more experience to lead me into a good position to be able to work for the Bears full time when I got done with school. Upper Iowa by all definitions was a smaller school compared to some of the other schools I got into and some of the other schools my friends went to um, but I had more opportunities. You can make it however you want it to be. You can mold your experience in a private. You can either spend four years just kind of going to class, not doing too much, and that'll be your experience, or you can take advantage of all that a private has to offer and then bring more to the table. And I think that's uh, what we capitalized on uh, myself and my classmates. I think we made Upper Iowa work for us. The great part about Upper Iowa is that it's nice, it's the small and community and very family-like and so I've been able to do projects around town in Fayette and um, through the school that have helped me to get more comfortable and get more confident in my work and so um, I think Fayette has been a huge part of why I've been able to do such a big project like this. Not only did Upper Iowa give me opportunities in my professional setting, but I'm also married to a former Peacock. My husband Chris played baseball at Upper Iowa, and we have two awesome sons now who get to live in this awesome athletic world that we live in. As an 18-year-old at Upper Iowa University trying to figure out just how to, you know, manage college, and then imagining yourself after college and then actually going out and achieving it, you know, once I decided I wanted to go to law school, it kind of set all these things into motion. You know, I have traveled to all corners of the world. I had teams in Shanghai and Beijing I'd vi visit regularly. Um, that's not something that, you know, 
sitting back here as a 18 year old, 19 year old college student that I ever dreamt would be part of what I did on a daily basis. And uh, just that little uh, encouragement from uh, Dr. Jana, he opened up that world to me. If you would have asked me 30 years ago um, if I would ever imagine doing X, um, I would have looked at you sideways. You know, a successful career in the Marine Corps, um, followed by, you know, a, a great family, and then ultimately, um, you know, achieving, achieving my bachelor's degree, and then where I'm at right now, um, working for, for uh, who I work for, the, uh, the FBI. Never in a million years would I have imagined myself doing that, and anyone I know would tell you the same thing. I love, I love being here with the Chicago Bears, and it's very similar to Fayette in the sense that it's a family atmosphere. If I can just imagine being here for a while, I'd say that I'd be, I'd be pretty happy with that. This internship also opened my eyes to all the opportunities that are available after graduate school, just the wide variety of jobs that are out there for scientific research. Thinking back, I would not have imagined ever going to, making it to Baylor, um, a top 20 medical school, and sitting with their um, chief of surgery, watching him do surgery, or ever seeing a human heart before actually getting to medical school. Uh, to think that I could be here as the head coach at the University of Iowa, uh, going into my 33rd year as a, as a head coach, uh, is really <laughs> unbelievable and hard to imagine that that could have happened when I was sitting in your chair in, in 1985 or 1986. But if you believe and, and, and you dream, you know, good things can happen. You just have to stick to it and stick to the plan. And couldn't be prouder of, of my days. Uh, if it wasn't for Upper Iowa, there's no way I would be here. And all the people there who helped me and got me going where I needed to go and, and straightened me out when I needed to be straightened out. Um, you know, I just can't say enough good things about it. And where the school's at now, I couldn't be prouder. You know, I talk at universities, I talk to high school students, I've done a lot of recruiting over my years, and one thing I tell students is, think big. You know, don't box yourself into what you think you know. There's a big, wild world out there, and it's a fun place to explore and go see. Without coming to Upper Iowa, I don't even know if I would still be doing art or not, but I'm so thankful that I did come here because I've met amazing people and connections, and I'm doing my dream job right here, painting a mural, so. I think the friends, um, faculty here I've met have had a grand impact um, on the person I've become. Um, I'm really grateful for everything this university has given me. Um, they've invested in me and honestly believed in me when I didn't believe in myself at times. So um, that's been, you know, a true gift. I just really want to encourage all of you to imagine um, for big, great things for you, you to do in your future. Um, the, the possibilities are endless and with the education that you get from Upper Iowa and the experiences that you get from Upper Iowa, you really have the opportunity um, to do great things in your lives.